a PCU disclaimer. Native Americans may be referred to as Indians in this presentation, and this is because they were referred to as Indians in the 17-1800s, not only by themselves, but also others. Well, raise your hand if you have Native American ancestry. Awesome, quite a few of us do, so this is great. Yeah, let's see if we can get rid of this. Okay. Anyway, my family story, the captivity narrative of Isaac Zane, is what we're going to be looking at next. In 1762, two brothers, Isaac and Jonathan Zane, who were 9 and 11, were captured by Indians on their way home from school in what is now Moorfield, West Virginia. Isaac and Jonathan were eventually taken over 400 miles to Detroit, a longer distance than from Portland to British Columbia. They were then taken to what is now Sandusky, Ohio. Isaac and Jonathan lived with the Wine Drop tribe, especially with the chief, Tarhi, his wife, Renu Cranes, and their daughter, Mikeira. Two years later, the brothers' relatives offered to ransom them. Jonathan was ransomed, 13-year-old Jonathan was ransomed, however, Tarhi refused Isaac's ransom. Without a male heir, Chief Char, he instead adopted Isaac into the tribe, and he assumed the name White Eagle. And this is actually Chief Char's spoon. Despite the special attention given to Isaac, he was not content in the tribe. He attempted to run away three times. On his last attempt to run away, he was captured by the Delaware Indians instead of his tribe, the Wyandots. Suspecting that Isaac was a traitor, the Delawares tortured him. Finally, they tied Isaac to a stake and prepared to light it on fire. Just as Isaac was about to be burned at the stake, however, a rider on horseback galloped in. And of course, it was the Princess Mayura. <laughs> Mayura persuaded the Delawares to let her take Isaac. And needless to say, he never ran away again. Instead, he married Princess Mayura. <laughs> so the Battle of Fort Henry comes into play now several years later in 1782. So, Isaac was captured, again, in 1762. So, 20 years later, Isaac's now in his late 20s. He's living with the Wyandots in Upper Sandusky, Ohio. And Isaac's siblings were living in the small settlement of Wheeling, <coughs> West Virginia. And now here's Moorfield, where Isaac was first captured. Anticipating attack by Loyalist Indians and British regulars, the Wheeling settlers sent a troop of about 15 men to get reinforcements. However, they never returned. The remaining inhabitants entered the town's fort, Fort Henry, and a nearby blockhouse manned by Colonel Ebenezer Zane, who was Isaac's brother. The Indians, including the Wyandots, so from Isaac's own tribe, and British regulars attacked the fort. After a day or two of continuous fighting and many lives lost, the fort ran out of gunpowder. And this happened September 11th. It wasn't just a bad day in 2001. The powder reserves were a distant blockhouse. Realizing that we cannot risk to lose a man, Isaac Zane's sister, Elizabeth, or Betty Zane, volunteered to go to get more powder from the blockhouse. Betty dashed through the fort gate and into the battle, and suddenly the Indians ceased firing and yelled, Squaw! Squaw! <laughs> <laughs> when she reached the blockhouse, Betty filled her apron with gunpowder and raced back to Fort Henry. <laughs> this time the Indians shot at Betty. Somehow, they missed. But he safely delivered her precious package. <coughs> Fort Henry now had enough gunpowder to continue fighting, and the next day, September 13th, the Indians retreated. An Ohio memorial states, in memory of Elizabeth Zane, whose heroic deed saved Fort Henry in 1782. The attack devastated the British, and they eventually withdrew the troops from the states. Fort Henry, the last battle of the American Revolution, fought here September 11 through 13, 1782. Elizabeth and Silas Zane led a force which defeated British troops and Indians under British officers carrying a British flag, Sweeney Betty Zane's heroic act. And as you can tell, it's now a city where this fort once was. The Battle of Fallen Timbers happened in 1794, so a few years later, and this was because of unfulfilled treaties that led the Indians to action against the U.S. In the Battle of Fallen Timbers, the father, we had Chief Tarhi here, was fighting against the United States with his, with his tribe, and he was the only Wyandotte chief to survive the battle, while Isaac was acting as a scout for the U.S., and General Wayne 
who is leading the troops against the Indians. Mm -hmm. The next year, the Treaty of Greenville is signed, which brings peace to the, between the natives and between the U.S. Tar, who was the leader of the Indian tribes and holder of this treaty, while well, Isaac acts as the principal interpreter. And Chief Tar, gave a speech then. The Great Spirit is now being us, and did he discover any baseness or treachery, it would excite his just anger against us. Brother, we are all sensible that when he struck the boundary, at that time it ran from Terranusquas to where the foot stood, which was destroyed in 1752. I understand that the line has since been moved a little toward us. Be strong, brothers, and fulfill your engagements. However, you will see later whether those actually were fulfilled. In 1796, a letter is sent from Sarah Zang, Isaac's cousin, to Isaac. Part of it reads, My cousin, my aged father, has often told me that his brother had a son, Isaac, who was taken prisoner as a boy and adopted into the Wyandotte tribe. We now have put it into our hearts by the good spirit to send some of our beloved friends among your tribe to invite them to learn of their white brothers. Useful labor will where the gun, which has been so destructive, will now be laid down. And then in 1805, another treaty is signed between the Wyandots and the U.S. In this treaty, actually I got to view the original document and museum. It was exchanged an allot allotment of money for the native's land. And the said Indian nations do again acknowledge themselves and all their tribes to be in friendship with and under the protection of the United States. And right up here is Chief Tahi's signature, or the crane, from the porcupine tribe. From the porcupine tribe. Mm -hmm. So Isaac and Mayura were instrumental in maintaining peace between the settlers and the natives. Zanesfield, Ohio. Isaac and Mayura were the original settlers of Zanesfield, Ohio, where they established the first fort in the area. A large border, boulder honors Isaac there. And there is my brother standing next to the boulder. Andrew? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so let's look at a brief timeline. In 1753, Isaac was born. In 1762, Isaac and Jonathan were captured. In 1764, Tarhi refused to ransom Isaac. In 1782, the Battle of Fort Henry. In 1786, Isaac and Tarhi witnessed a treaty. In, 1760, in 1794, the Battle of Fallen Timbers took place. In 1795, the Treaty of Greenville took place. 1796, the letter was sent from Sarah Zane. Seven, in 1805, treaty was, another treaty was signed, and in 1816, Isaac and Mayura both died. Well, in conclusion of the captivity narrative, we're not totally sure of what Isaac's faith was, but if he was like Joseph, I'm sure he would have said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done for the saving of many lives. So let's take a look at our heritage briefly. Isaac and Mayera are my sixth great grandparents, and quite a few of you have Indian heritage. So what is your story? Do you know? Research that, find out about it. It's amazing all the things that we've been able to find you know, original documents of letters, speeches, treaties. <coughs> and this was a powwow I got to go to last fall in Oklahoma. And this is the current Wyandotte chief, Billy Friend. So here's a fun family fact. Currently, four out of the five major Wyandotte families all descend from adopted white men. The Browns, Zanes, Walkers, and Whites. And don't we all look wonderfully Native American? <laughs> <laughs> So a little bit of Wyandot language. Hello or hi is kwe. Because you have to read kwe. 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 Good job. Okay. Thank you. Is tezume. Tezume. Say it again. Tezume. Good job. God or Almighty is hamesu. Say it again. Hamesu. 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 All right. Good job, guys. Now you know some Wyandot. Here's some of my resources. And Temisu, thank you. <laughs>